This is KGW News at Noon. But we're going to start with this mess in Washington. An oil tanker crashes and lost a lot of its load right on I-5. Right now, all the northbound lanes of the freeway are shut down. All right, thanks for being with us. I'm Chris Willis. That is the worst news for anyone trying to drive north on this extremely busy travel day right before the 4th of July. Let's get started with KGW's Tim Gordon live up in Centralia. Tim, what can you tell us? All right, Chris, well, this is exit 82. This is the last open off ramp before the crash here, uh, just north of Centralia. You can see the major backup here, the detour. Uh, you can see that here going underneath the freeway. That takes you onto Highway 99 to go north, but it is very slow going. There's a huge backup, as you can see. It is all because of this. You could also see from Sky 8, an oil tanker crashed and overturned. It spilled 1,800 gallons of oil right onto the roadway. It happened before dawn this morning, but it is having a horrible effect that could easily last all day long. The backup has been several miles long, and that's not gone away at all. So many people wanting to head north for the 4th, just a mess for them. The Washington State Patrol says the driver of the truck, 53-year-old Jeffrey Anderson of Yelm, was DUI when driving that big rig. They say he went off the right side of I-5, hit a guardrail, came back across all the lanes before overturning and spilling. Well, what a backup at this interchange, too. We talked to a local driver and a professional driver about all of this. Now, best advice? To avoid this area, if at all possible. I mean, there's other ways around. If you live here, there's other ways around. You sit and you be patient and don't run over anybody. That's all you can do. And about the DUI charge against that truck driver that caused this? I'm sorry, I have no room for that. Drugs, DUI, no, no. No, I'm sorry. Uh, it's dangerous enough being sober. <laughs> yeah, no doubt about that. Good luck to Herb there, the truck driver, trying to get back up to Kent, Washington. You see ramp closed here. You just can't go on I-5 north of Centralia. Look, if you plan to get away for your holiday and head this direction, Washington is saying, don't do it at this point. The backup continues to build down uh, below us, south of us at Chehalis. The roadway, they're out there cleaning it. The truck's out of the way now, but it's literally going to take hours. You know, some vehicles drove through that oil and spread it like three miles beyond the crash. So they've got a lot of work to do. Uh, if you plan to go this way, expect a long detour. Chris, back to you. Boy, that is a mess. All right, Tim, thank you. Again, that crash is causing big headaches for drivers ahead of the 4th of July. Today is the busiest holiday travel day of the summer. AAA reports the busiest hours on the roads are between 2 and 6.30 p.m. If you're flying, there's also a record number of people expected to be at the airports this year. At PDX, 240,000 people are expected to come through in the coming days. If you want to beat those crowds, experts say consider leaving a little early or later in the evening. All right, here's a question. Can you celebrate the 4th of July without fireworks? City of Lake Oswego is going to give it a try. Instead of a fireworks show, they'll be hosting a laser light show this year. It'll be at Millennium Plaza Park. They'll have a smoke machine and transform the place using dazzling lasers and music. Park officials believe it'll be a cleaner, safer alternative to a big fireworks display. One of the biggest impacts is we're not going to have the effect on animals, pets that people have. Um, and then also there won't be debris. There won't be debris that falls out of the sky. Um, there's not going to be the opportunity for burning cinders to catch things on fire. All right, park officials say if this year's laser show goes well, they might incorporate drones into next year's show. We also want to be clear, Lake Oswego is also having its annual fireworks display on the lake. So you get the best of both worlds there. If you're traveling, why not celebrate it with us here at KGW? If you're not traveling, you can watch the Vancouver Fireworks Spectacular right here starting at 10 o'clock tomorrow night. Maggie Vespa will host alongside Rod Hill. And Rod Hill joining us now with a look at your holiday forecast and 
Today's forecast, how's it look today, Ron? Looks fantastic. No weather issues for people leaving uh, to get out the door today, Chris, and tomorrow here in the Rose City. I still think it'll be mostly sunny and right around 80 degrees. If your plans do call for you to hit the roads a little bit later today, we're still showing some showers and thunderstorms over in Idaho and moving up into Montana, uh, extreme northeastern Washington, and that's it. Otherwise, we are dry, so you got to go ways to find any moisture. The coast is starting to clear out here, Pacific City. If you are going to the beach, they should have plenty of sunshine tomorrow as well, but there will be cloudiness around on Friday and also much of Saturday at the beach with temperatures in the 60s. One of the sunnier cameras is actually out in the gorge, so hitting I-84 and driving to Hood River today, you'll quickly find mostly sunny skies. This is the camera at Cathedral Ridge Winery. Uh, West breeze is picking up, but no issues there. And uh, over in Eagle Crest in Central Oregon, partly cloudy skies. Temperatures, if you're headed to Central Oregon, will be pretty close to the Lama Valley. They're trying to get up to about 70 degrees today as well. A lot of clouds over downtown, but there are breaks around. We're holding at 67 degrees. We do expect a slow increase of sunshine for the rest of today, 73 at 4 p.m. and still about 70 at 8 o'clock. That entire holiday weekend forecast, it does include a Saturday rain chance. We'll have more on that coming up, Chris. All right, we'll see you in a bit, Ron. Thank you. Police are searching for a shooting suspect in St. Helens. Take a look. Two men were shot at a home last night right off Cowlett Street and Old Portland Road. They were taken to the hospital but are expected to survive. Police say the suspect drove off in an older white Toyota sedan. They think that person might be roommates with the victims. We are working uh, feverishly with the Oregon State Police, the Columbia County Sheriff's Office, uh, Scappoose P Police Department, and we're trying to identify this suspect and take him into custody. Obviously, he's, uh, he's armed and dangerous. He shot two individuals, so we're working to get him identified and get him into custody. Police also found a seven-year-old girl upstairs in that home. She was unharmed. Right now, we don't have a description of the suspect, but we'll bring you any new details once we get them. Estacada police want you to be on the lookout after a man reportedly tries to abduct a teenage girl. This happened yesterday evening, Milo McIver State Park. Police say a man tried to abduct a 13 year old girl. This is a sketch they've made of the suspect described as a white man, 30 to 40 years old, about 5'8", with an average build, short, curly brown hair. He was driving a red two door pickup truck. If you think you know who he is, you're encouraged to call the Oregon State Police. Some people in the Bethany area are shaken up after a man broke into a little girl's bedroom window. Thank goodness she woke up the dad and and that he went after him. That's the family's neighbor who says she's surprised that something like this could happen in her neighborhood. We're told the little girl alerted her dad who found the stranger climbing out of his seven year old daughter's bedroom window. It happened around 430 yesterday morning at the courtyards at Springville condos. The dad chased, the, chased after the suspect. Deputies finally arrested him. He's 30-year-old Cord Knutson. He's facing burglary and criminal mischief charges. Might be lucky that the cops got him before dad did. Now to a serious health hazard at a Seattle hospital. Officials at Seattle Children's Hospital say one patient has died. Five others have been infected by a mold infestation. The mold was first detected back in May. The outbreak has caused the hospital to close all 14 of its operating rooms. The molds and airborne fungus, it's a very common type of spore, but medical experts say it must be filtered completely out of operating rooms because it could cause dangerous infections during surgery. The hospital says it is taking steps to disinfect those operating rooms. Two of the newest blazers are in town today. Anthony Tolliver and Mario Hazonia met with the media at the team's practice facility in Tualatin. Both players will be coming off the bench next season, could play important roles in helping Portland get even further in the playoffs next year. You know, being a role player in the NBA is, I, I call it the hardest job in the world uh, because it's, you never know uh, when your number's going to be called, uh, but you have to work like you're going to play 30 minutes a game, and that's a really tough balance to have. And, I've just been able to find that niche and uh, really take advantage of it. Yeah, Mario was a lottery pick in 2015. Hasn't quite lived up to the promise, though, but he's hoping to reach his potential here in Portland. Welcome to Rip City, fellas. Hey, the U.S. women's soccer team is heading to the World Cup Finals. They beat England 2-1 to yesterday despite missing star forward Megan Rapino because of an injury. NBC's Kelly Kobiea is following the team in France. 
This morning, Team USA is just one win away from a fourth World Cup title. But the American women did not celebrate their victory over England for very long. Just hours after their close-fought win, they were back on the practice field this morning for a training session. The Americans topping England two goals to one. Kristen Press putting them ahead early. Done. Then, on her 30th birthday, Alex Morgan with this amazing header. The superstar celebrated by poking a little fun at the Brits, pretending to drink tea with her pinky finger extended. Late in the game, England almost came back with this controversial penalty kick. Goalie Alyssa Naher with an incredible save. England's well, coach congratulating the US. And, uh, I think there's a lot of respect now between both countries. You see that at the end when both sets of players hugged each other. USA! Fans USA! spending their summer vacations in Europe are now hoping to see the US women make history again. We are going to the finals! <laughs> and the US could face their rival Sweden again in the final on Sunday. Sweden takes on the Netherlands in their semifinal here tonight. If they win, they go through. And by the way, more controversy over celebrations. The British press taking issue with Alex Morgan's teacup celebration. Kelly Cobiella, NBC News, Lyon, France. Now you knew somebody would be offended about something, right? Nike's decision to pull the plug on a new line of sneakers for the 4th of July is getting major backlash from Arizona's governor. We first told you about this story yesterday. Get this, the company's recalled the shoes. They feature the Betsy Ross flag. They did it because of a complaint from former NFL player Colin Kaepernick. The issue, Kaepernick reportedly found the shoe offensive because of the flag's connection to a time of slavery. So now, the governor of Arizona is calling out Nike on Twitter. Governor Doug Ducey has ordered the state to withdraw all financial incentive dollars being provided for Nike to build a factory near Phoenix. Huh. In a tweet, Governor Ducey said, quote, Arizona's economy is doing just fine without Nike. We don't need to suck up to companies that consciously denigrate our nation's history. Hmm, is he going too far? We want to know what you think about this. Do you disagree or agree with Nike's decision to pull its Betsy Ross American flag sneakers? Let us know at KGW.com vote or by clicking on the viewer voice tab in our KGW News app.